They do a th 800 to 1,000 bills. If you can see the difference in scope of what the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance does versus you know anybody who's ever tried this on any scale in the past. Um, we are staffed completely by volunteers, dedicated volunteers. So I'm going to mention some of them here today. Um, we recruit, endorse, and donate to candidates. We donated almost $22,000 uh, last year. Eighty-seven out of the 123 endorsed candidates won here in New Hampshire. So something I explained to my radio audience, I should mention, my name is Mark Edge and I'm on a nationally syndicated radio program. Thank you, it's called Free Talk Live. You can listen to it at freetalklive.com. That's enough self-promotion. What I tell my radio audience is, is that New Hampshire's singular for this reason. Um, so if we have 87 legislators uh, that are rated by the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance as uh, pro-liberty, that gives us something that 49 other states don't have. We have essentially a, liber a functional libertarian veto. If you want to get your conservative bill through, if you want to get your liberal bill through, you're gonna have to go through the libertarians because the vast majority of bills don't, go, get, don't get passed with more than an 87 per, uh, point majority. So that means libertarians, uh, pro-liberty people, I mean, if you don't like the term libertarian, that's fine by me. Pro-liberty people have something here that they don't have any place else in the United States. And it's because of New Hampshire's unique legislature with 400 citizen legislators that this was able to happen. Yes, sir. When I signed up for the Free State Project, I signed up after the vote uh, for New Hampshire. Um, I wanted to see where they were going to vote on. When I signed up, what I wanted to see was what we have here today. Um, I know it says liberty in our lifetime. Liberty means whatever it means to uh, different people. What I wanted to see was simply for pro-liberty people to have a seat at the table. And that's already occurred. And it occurred actually several terms ago. <laughs> so within less about a half a decade of moving I got what I had hoped for from the Free State Project so to me this is home and this is where I'm gonna say because I got what I wanted from the Free State Project as I said 800 to a thousand bills are reviewed each year um, and we also organize testimony for uh, bills I mean, think about other states, the ones that are larger. People, citizens don't go and talk to their legislators. That only happens in these small states. If I had gone from Sarasota, Florida and driven six hours to Tallahassee to let to uh, testify in front of, and then probably had to stay in several nights after they postponed the hearings and all that stuff, um, you know, buying the hotel room, staying several nights, but finally getting talked to some of these uh, uh, lawyers that were, you know, essentially unsuccessful at their jobs chasing ambulances and decided <laughs> to be legislators, um, finally got a chance to talk to them. What do you think? You think they would have cared what I had to say? Well, no. There's 70 legislators there. They didn't give a. They wouldn't give a darn about that. Only here in New Hampshire do we have this opportunity, and that opportunity has been magnified because of the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. Every week. We, um, I keep saying we, I don't do this, I'm just a life member and I'm excited to be one, so if I, you know, if, if I own the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, it's because I'm excited about it. Um, we do, a, a, every week, we do the gold standard, which is a recommendation to legislators on how to vote. They've got this coming from the, you know, the, their uh, parties, whichever parties they might be. They need it coming from a pro-liberty standpoint, and we provide that, and again, the only state to do so. Um, then at the end of the year, we rate legislators based on that uh, rating. Um, something very exciting has happened this year that hasn't happened before. I will get to it a little later. Um, I'm sure you're interested in dinner, but we've had a, a, a tremendous amount of legislators that have gotten a perfect score. Wow. Lest you think we're leaving things out, there's also a civic action fund for which we have uh, raised $11,000 for charities here in New Hampshire. And here's my pitch. Um, it's been five years, I think, since I uh, signed up as a life member for the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. This isn't a big deal. It's a hundred bucks. 
And the advantage of it is you don't have to sign up again. You just give them $100, and then you're a member of the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance forever. I have made sure that there will be ladies back at the table that will take your sign up anytime you'd like this evening. So please make your way back if you'd like to be a like member. We'd love to have you on board. Uh, real quick, we'll recognize the board. Um, Paul Best, who is running around pulling his hair out. We'll just see if he has any left. <laughs> there you go. Doing good. He didn't fix the microphone, people. All right. <laughs> Kevin Bloom, our political action director. And the lady who would love to have you sign up as a life member, Sandy Pierre, the uh, membership director. Amanda Bolden, the uh, Civic Action Director. <laughs> the lady who likely does most of the work, Melissa Best. <laughs> our Research Director, Tom O'Flaherty, and our Treasurer, Dennis Corgan, could not be here this evening. They had uh, conflicts that they just could not work out. So. Um, but also, the room is, I don't know if you guys uh, took a look in the parking lot, but it's just uh, full of New Hampshire House uh, uh, license plates. So if I could get all the legislators that have to be here, um, we'd like to thank you for coming and uh, have you stand for a moment. Uh, Dr. Carson in the back and Rand Paul in the front. I think I lost it. Dr. Carson in the back and Rand Paul in the front. Thank you. So, um, also, I would like to recognize Carol McGuire and Michelle Level. They were uh, last year's legislators. What's that? Lavelle? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, um, we're the uh, legislators of the year and activist of the year award winners last year. So, join me in thanking and in congratulating this year's activist of the year winner, Bill Allman. <laughs> Short, sweet, and scripted, because center of attention is not remotely my happy place. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> we don't want to do that. Um, I took a moment the other day to review the record of past recipients of the NHLA's Activist of the Year. Uh, giants all, even in this august activist community. And I really have no idea what I'm doing up here. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, honestly, there's been a mistake in the vote. <laughs> You're it, Bill. <laughs> You're not going to get up that easy. <laughs> of course, I uh, do benefit from the fact that increasingly New Hampshire activist candidates so easily find themselves competing for legislator of the year uh, honors instead only in New Hampshire, right? And on that notion, of course, Don Gorman would look at me and growl, don't 
even think about it. <laughs> and, and I fully agree. <laughs> um, okay, first and foremost, because I don't get to say it publicly nearly enough, I need to thank so very much my beautiful wife, Darlene, for tolerating <laughs> And second, uh, this organization, this dinner, these awards, in such a brief span of years, already have such a storied history in the struggle for individual liberty in New Hampshire. I am honored and profoundly humbled to realize that you consider me just a small part of that history. Thank you. Thank you all for your own commitment to peace, freedom, and prosperity. I accept this for all of you. Thank you. It's the last call for raffle tickets. Uh, if you want to buy or use tickets, now is the time. All raffles close in about 10 minutes. Volunteers will be selling the 50-50 raffle. Um, tickets around the room. Prize raffle tickets are available at all the tables. So please, uh, get some raffle tickets. Um, Paul is going to come up and explain a very important app called GenCourt Mobile. And um, I'm interested in what he has to say about it. I understand it's going to be a big change, game changer. Thanks, Mark. So uh, it, it, right beneath the schedule in your program, and also I think there's a card on the tables for, for GenCorp Mobile. Uh, what this is, I just wanted to uh, announce it here. Uh, this is sort of the opening of it. Uh, it's developed, developed by Seamus. And what it is, is it's a, uh, it's a, I think we're all, many of us have spent a lot of time on the state website. And it's a little bit difficult to navigate to find the information that you want to find. <laughs> Well, GenCorp Mobile contains all that information in an easily searchable form, so you can look at the records of legislators, what their liberty rating is uh, from the NHLA, uh, how the track a particular bill as it goes through the process. Um, and and uh, one, one, one thing that Seamus has agreed to do is give full access, you know, so if you just go to GenCorpMobile.com, uh, there's a, a limited access, but he's agreed to give full access to all full and lifetime members of the NHLA. Also, uh, full access to NHLA endorsed representatives. So, if you would like uh, to get an invitation to get access uh, to that app, it's very easily to, easy to use on your phone. Uh, just email membership. That's Sandy Pierre. Email her at membership at nhliberty.org, and uh, it's also a good reason to become a full member or lifetime member if you're if you're not already. So, check that out. Uh, I'd like to call up now. Uh, actually, uh, I'd like to call Kevin to. Uh, 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 with a uh, legislative highlights and also to uh, give out the Legislator of the Year Award. I noticed uh, when I looked at the Google documents that Paul had written down brief legislative highlights from Kevin, so I changed it while he was writing it to relatively brief. <laughs> As relatively brief. So, <clears throat> first of all, the reason it's relatively brief is the NHLA collectively testified on a lot of bills this session, including constitutional carry. I'm only going to list the highlights, 
Work is ongoing on civil asset forfeiture reform. That's Representative Mike Sylvia, who is chairing the subcommittee. The House Judiciary Committee. So they may have gotten more than they bargained for. <laughs> and that, <clears throat> we expect to see HB 636 come to the floor next year, right? And maybe we'll, uh, what we're trying to do with civil asset forfeiture reform is you actually have to be convicted of a crime before they can take your stuff. This is a multi-year effort, and it has involved uh, Lee McGrath, who was a speaker um, here last year, and it involved, it goes way back, and it was also um, worked on by Dan McGuire, who is here right now, and he's working on it now still, um, a couple sessions ago. Um, Seth Cohn, who's not here, but um, Brandon Gaida, and a whole lot of other people who are, are also working on it now. And, oh, and also uh, the NHCLU. Devin's around here someplace, I know she is. Sorry, I can't see anything. But thank you very much. It's been a great, uh, a, a great work in progress, and we just are really looking forward to ending that terrible practice in New Hampshire. Actually, I spoke to some uh, members of the Attorney General's Office staff um, at Area 23, which is located at 254 North State Street. <laughs> And they just came in for a beer, and I explained to them what we were doing, and they said, isn't that the law already? And I said, no, no, it's not. So now they know. Um, <laughs> moving along. Um, now, this year for the budget, hearings were held on HB2. That was the budget bill, and they held hearings on it all over the state. And I attended the hearing in Derry. There were several hundred people there. There was me and one other guy that said, no, don't raise taxes, everybody else got up and said, we want more money. However, <laughs> we focused on the destructive nature of two particular new taxes, would have put cigar sellers and vape stores out of business. Uh, the proposed tax was 76% of the wholesale value of the things sold. That is not a revenue raising tax, that is a tax that's meant to destroy uh, two industries. However, the House Budget Committee, after listening to, I would guess if the numbers played out between people opposed and people for, listening to, well, thousands of people demand more money, said, no, we're not gonna raise taxes. So, yes, House Budget Committee, good job. Uh, some of the tax increases the Senate later restored, but then the governor didn't think that was enough and uh, vetoed it anyway. Industrial help, hemp cultivation, which we've been working on for the last couple sessions, became legal in New Hampshire. One of, we had a, a couple of bills, one that was um, put in by Elizabeth Edwards, who's right over here. Uh, yeah. That one they killed, that was our favorite bill, that was the best bill out of the two, but because of a bill that had been introduced previously um, by NHLA members, the, uh, there was a study committee that met last summer and they invited the Agricultural um, College to show up and testify, and they came out in favor of it. So the study committee recommended that the bill be passed. So it did go through agriculture. The bill that was killed went through judiciary. The bill that passed went through agriculture. And uh, the thing was that the, um, one of the former chairs of the Agriculture Committee, Tara Sad, actually had, uh, was a prime sponsor of the, the Industrial Hemp Bill previously. So it's been passed and it was signed by the governor. So the, um, in, essentially institutions of higher learning can now grow industrial. So the big plus. Uh, Decrim made it further than ever this year. It passed the House and uh, also they overturned the Senate committee recommendation. It was finally killed in the Senate by the usual suspects. <clears throat> we took another shot at, at legalizing poker and is uh, Jim Spillane here? Oh, good job. Uh, Jim Spillane is prime sponsor on the poker bill, and it would have made uh, poker legal in this, recognize that poker is a game of skill and not a game of chance. And this is, um, it got killed again because they sent it to the House Ways and Means Committee to be killed, and they obliged. There were several machinations to prevent us from being heard. One of them was they published the hearing for the wrong day and time, and then they held it a day early. <laughs> And thanks to Carol McGuire, we got to, they told us when we got there, they said, 
no, we did this yesterday, so we're not gonna let you talk. And Carol um, got it set up so that we could actually say something after which they voted against it. So, um, however, thanks to a lot of great reps, we got a roll call vote, we got 150 votes, 217 against, unfortunately, but that's the best we've done so far. Um, and Darren Tapp, who's a mathematics professor, testified for us that poker is indeed a game of skill and it's been proven mathematically, so it's not, <laughs> it's not just my opinion, it's a fact. Right. Okay, now, um, somebody you may have heard of before, Representative Amanda Bolden, who's, who is coincidentally a, a, a lifetime NHLA member, <laughs> was a prime sponsor of a bill legalizing Narcan, which is an opiate oh, an antagonist that prevents drug overdoses and can be used by non-medical personnel. She also was a prime sponsor of the Good Samaritan Act, which protects people who report a drug overdose from prosecution. Both bills have been signed into law. Woo! So, <laughs> Now, out there somewhere, there's what we call the Coalition Against Fun. And what they do is they try to ban fireworks each and every year. Not all, not just sparklers, they try to ban the mortars and the really good ones. So we've made this just a sort of a cause, and we show up, they keep coming to committee every year, and we keep going to committee and beating them every time. Now, they found out that we were going to the Commerce Committee and beating them there, so they got to move to a different uh, criminal justice for some reason, I don't know why, but we beat it there too. And we're making really good friends out of the, uh, the fireworks manufacturers. <laughs> <laughs> so they know where the NHLA is, yes indeed they do. <clears throat> now, Representative Keith Murphy's bill, which uh, allowed the Liquor Commission to approve labels depicting a minor, passed both the House and the Senate. And then it was vetoed by the governor. Oh, it gets better. In a big surprise, the House voted to overturn her veto. And I think we, I talked to John Byrd right after that and he said, the chances of the Senate voting to overturn that veto um, it can only happen if two of the reps bang their heads together by accident and then, or two of the senators, excuse me, not reps, <laughs> um, however, it was in fact overturned, the veto was overturned by the Senate as well. <laughs> Good job, Senator. Good job. So now we can drink our Founders Breakfast Stout in bottles just like the Good Lord intended and like the big city folk in Massachusetts. <laughs> Drunk right, babies. Where Okay, now, um, SB 262 is a real ID bill and it raised its ugly head again. Uh, in 2007, New Hampshire led the way in rejecting the federal government's demand to create a national ID card by standardizing driver's licenses nationwide. Uh, it would have included biometric data and your social security number as well. Former NHLA political director, Representative Joel Winters was a leader in the effort uh, to kill the real ID bill. Okay, anyway, um, it hasn't been, real ID has not been implemented in the United States because seven states refused to accept it following uh, New Hampshire, showing the rest of the country how nullification is supposed to work. <laughs> this year, two senators introduced a bill to bring back real ID. The Senate committee hearing featured the sponsors. On our side, uh, there was me and the NHLA, Devin Chaffee from the ACLU, and Jim Harper flew in from the Cato Institute to testify in Concord just on this, about this bill. After the hearing, the bill went to immediate executive session where the sponsors of the bill joined the rest of the senators on the committee in voting inexpedient to legislate five to zero. The bill was later defeated by the whole Senate. And I'm winding this up so don't. <laughs> okay, now, but, but there's still some good news. Okay, there's really good news. Bless um, just a, one more bit on the legislative uh, update thing. Okay, there was a special election very recently. Uh, the NHLA endorsed Yvonne Dean Bailey, who's a 19 year, honor, 19 year old honor student, and her quest to defeat a former state rep who owned the local newspaper. The unions outspent us by six or eight to one. The opposition even resorted to the dirty trick of issuing a fake press release five days before the election under Yvonne's name to the effect that she was dropping out of the race. This race was won by 200 votes. It was a nail-biter right down to the last minute. 
It was an election where every phone call and every door knock and every flyer made a difference. Um, there were so many HLA members who volunteered that I uh, caused a few broken uh, or sprained feet when I missed or got them wrong when I posted it. Anyway, because of NHLA donors, we were able to contribute the maximum we possibly could to Yvonne's campaign. Thank you. And Seamus and I were privileged to attend Yvonne's swearing-in ceremony at the State House, and that's why we do this. So, now the news that you've all been waiting for. This year, seven representatives achieved a perfect NHLA voting score, which has never, ever happened before. We have more A-plus rated legislators and more A-rated legislators than we've ever had before. Um, so we have, in addition to our Legislator of the Year Award, several plaques to give out. And um, by the way, my suggestion was, let's make them all Legislator of the Year. But Paul stood up, bearing a great sword, and cried, there can be only one! <laughs> Or else he said it's not in the bylaws and that other part was that Highlander guy, but either of them. <laughs> two of the reps are, are understand are not present today, so I'm going to mention them first. Um, two of the representatives that has achieved a perfect NHLA score were Representative Raymond Howard Jr. and Representative Eric Johnson. So if you are here, let, let me know. Otherwise, if you would, uh, the other recipient of the perfect uh, the perfect vote award, are, and if you would come forward when I call your name, you'll get your plaque. <laughs> Representative Keith Murphy. Murphy. <laughs> Representative Mike Sylvia. <laughs> Representative Shen Kellogg. <laughs> Representative Don Burt. <laughs> and Representative <laughs> Danny Itza. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Just hang on for just a second. Okay, well, wrap it up. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. to beat a perfect score, you have to be perfect plus. <laughs> so what we did was we looked at um, the bills sponsored and the number of bills that were, um, that were um, the, well, the uh, victim of the Legislator of the Year Award had actually um, prime sponsored even. Um, and so the uh, Legislator of the Year this year has been an ardent voice in defense of the New Hampshire Constitution at the State House. It's been an advocate for jury nullification and has introduced many bills defending states' rights in the 10th Amendment. He's been a member of the NHLA's five-year honor roll every year since it was begun in 2010, and in 2007 and 2008 served as the NHLA political director. Gosh, who could it be? Um, <laughs> so this year we're happy to honor Dan Itza as NHLA. <laughs> Um, you know, I've never... Dan. Yes. Great. Great. <laughs> I am uh, tremendously honored. I've, I've never had a perfect score before. I'm not quite sure how that happened. Because, <laughs> um, you know, I just vote my conscience. Um, this has been an amazing journey. I remember very well being on the board with Dennis and Carol and... Uh, others and that's that's when we came up with the gold standard um, it's been a tremendous fight to defend liberty in the state of New Hampshire I couldn't have done it without 
all of you and my compatriots in the legislature, my good friend Bill O'Brien, who sat, be who sat behind me at first term. I can think of no greater honor or idea that I could aspire to than to be associated with a group of people like you and to spend my time fighting for liberty. Thank you. You can be seated. Another round of applause. Perfect start. You know, it's great to see those guys up here, and they're all heroes for what they've done for us, but let's not forget the people who participated in the bill review, the gold standard, and the liberty rating. If you'd raise your hands right now, we'd like to give you a little uh, recommendation, or a little uh, applause. Without you guys, the creation of liberty rating would not be possible, thus we wouldn't have anybody standing up here getting our applause. So thank you so much for your great work. Volunteers and board members uh, will begin handing out the Liberty Rating now, so we will know, um, you know, how everybody got scored. I think it bears uh, reading here what's on the cover of the Liberty Rating. This report card is based on pro-Liberty and anti-Liberty votes and their impact in the state of New Hampshire. Actual recorded floor votes on legislation in the House and Senate. Bills have been carefully selected for inclusion, which clearly demonstrate the level of respect our elected representatives show for our individual rights and liberties. We don't do all 800 to 1,000 bills in here, just the ones that uh, we think most show the legislators' uh, intent. This year we used 50 roll call votes in the House and 22 in the Senate. Every bill used for the Liberty Rating was on the weekly gold standard, so they were recommended how to vote for this. Every bill, um, bills were weighed based on their impact. The numerical scores were converted to letter grades. Below the, gra uh, below the grade of F is the ignominious constitutional threat. It's uh, listed as a CT. <laughs> voters and citizens like this for use as, uh, as a nonpartisan voter's guide. I do. Point out, uh, let's see, the category for attendance at uh, roll call votes, that's the dereliction of duty. New Hampshire uh, citizens should know if their representatives are actually representing them in Concord. You know, we've got 400 representatives. Sometimes people don't miss them if they don't show up, so we make sure that the, everybody knows. We have a five-year honor roll included. Kevin Bloom, Tom O'Flaherty, Paul and Melissa Best, Seamus Casey, um, and the Gold Standard Group. Thank you all for your efforts and the uh, Liberty Rating, Paul, Kevin, and Tim would be, uh, these, they'll be happy to answer any of your questions about the Liberty Rating scoring methods. Same scale was used as uh, last year. We salute the top 20 reps who are doing the right thing by adhering to the Constitution, trying to stop the expansion of state government. We strive to put principle before politics. This year we would like to specifically thank top bill reviewers and gold standard contributors. And uh, Paul's going to hand out, hand out that uh, award, so come on, Paul. So I think most of us realize, maybe not all of us, but a lot of us realize how many hours goes into reviewing uh, legislation and creating the gold standard every week. Amanda. There are 800 to 1,000 bills that are created every year because we have 400 state reps, each of whom can create as much as many bills as they would like. And it's a really monumental effort to go through all or almost all those 800 to 1,000 bills and check, you know, to, to, to read them, understand them, and rate them uh, on a liberty scale to understand whether they need to be uh, paid attention to, whether they're important the impact. Uh, and so we would like to specifically thank volunteers who helped with the uh, to review legislation, and also volunteers that help with the gold standard. As you may know, this year we've started giving out a gold standard in the Senate as well as the House, uh, which uh, maybe doesn't quite double the workload, but it certainly increases it greatly, and it's already a monumental effort. Uh, so I would like to thank, uh, call the following uh, volunteers up to the front uh, to be recognized specifically for their contributions. Uh, our top three gold standard contributors this year 
are Michelle Lavelle, Doris Hohensee, and James Stein. Please, please come to the front. I'd like to also call our top three bill reviewers of the year to the front. Uh, as I say, there are 800 to 1,000 bills every year, and uh, it, you know these these top reviewers are reviewing close to 100 bills. Uh, they've reviewed close to 100 bills bills this year. Uh, it really, a, a enormous uh, commitment that I think deserves uh, recognition. So. Uh, I'd like to call, James Stein is already up here, he was also a top bill, review, uh, bill reviewer. I'd also like to call Bill Perry and Gordon Kemp, please. One more round of applause, and I'd like to call Mark up to uh, award the raffle winners. He is on the way with the results. The results are following close behind me. <laughs> Delium, do we have the uh, bucket o tickets? Working on the bucket o tickets. Yep. So any of you can be bill reviewers. Um, all it takes is uh, getting involved at the uh, New Hampshire, the NHLA website. That's nhliberty.com. Is that right? Org. Org. Sorry. <laughs> I did it four, six years ago. It's on here. Well, thanks. I didn't have that in front of me. You're not going to get to draw the raffle tickets now. <laughs> All you have to do is go to the website and uh, begin re 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 reviewing bills. It's just that easy. Mark, who is the um, senator of the year? Do we know? I don't know. Look in here. It's got to be. You have to be present to win. Andy Sanborn? Oh. Andy Sanborn, thank you for being the Senator of the Year. So if you're not a member yet, uh, please consider joining. Uh, we have, uh, we'll have uh, Delia and Kristen in the back at the registration table. It's uh, free to join or $20 for two years. Help expand liberty in uh, New Hampshire by contributing to our PAC, which supports pro-liberty, pro-constitution, pro-common sense candidates to the tune of $22,000 this year. And uh, you can donate or sign up for a membership via the website, which is nhliberty.org. And of course, at the registration table, we'd be happy to sign you up as a member. Thank you for attending. Your time and attention are yours, and you've given them to us this evening, so thank you so much. I also have a Leatherman that was used in the re repair of the uh, initial system here. Mark one of our uh, um, uh, system. So if this is your Leatherman, I think it's over here. I'm not sure whose it is exactly. Please come pick it up. I appreciate it for your use. Thank you, everybody. Drive home safe.